Welcome to the second uh, class capsule, second operations management class capsule. This is supposed to be uh, a capsule, uh, vi short video that will help us crystallize the concepts in class. Uh, so the second chapter is dealing with the operation strategy or global environment and the operation strategy and what's the impact of uh, globalization or global environment on these strategies and how does operation strategy support the overall strategy of an organization. When we talk about global organization or global environment, we talk about companies that went actually decided to move their strategy to account for the global environment to develop their strategy. For example, Boeing developing their sales and supply chain uh, on a worldwide basis because of the location of their customers and their suppliers as well. Benetton, for example, moving inventories faster and faster than its competition by building flexibility into the design, production and distribution. Zara could be accounted as well as a company that has decided actually to accelerate the pace of innovation in terms of fashion design to allow them to be actually quick to the market and provide uh, a collection almost every two weeks, basically 26 collections uh, in the market. Sony as well has developed their capabilities to buy uh, from suppliers uh, around the world in Thailand, Malaysia and around the world to allow them actually to crystallize, uh, capitalize, sorry, on, uh, on uh, synergies and economies to allow them to better compete. Why uh, globalize? We globalize in general to improve our supply chain, our supply chain capability. We globalize to reduce costs because of labor, taxes, tariffs, location advantages, uh, proximity to, to ports, etc. We, we globalize as well to improve operation, to understand, to better understand markets by locating ourselves closer to the old market. We globalize to improve products to attract and retain global talent because of global companies tend to attract better and easier talents than other organizations. However, however uh, globalization might raise some issues in terms of cultural and ethical uh, perspective. Cultures can be quite different and attitudes can be uh, can provide uh, can be very different towards punctuality land breaks environment intellectual uh, property etc etc but when we look at globalization we look at actual uh, other factors as well literacy rate rate of innovation rate of technology number of skilled workers we look at worth et ethics taxes availability of raw material interest rates population and then the capabilities, basically telecommunication infrastructure and road infrastructure, with, which are extremely important. We look as well at uh, uh, export uh, restriction, variations in languages and the ability to impact actually local market and local customers as well and local employees as well. Uh, now, uh, we develop actually as organizations in general missions and strategies. Now the mission is a statement that says to the organization, says to the world where the organization is going and the strategy tells the organization how to get there. The clearer the vision, the mission, the easier it is to develop the strategy of an organization. Now a mission would say actually wh where the organization is going. It provides us with the purpose of being of the organization. It provides the boundaries uh, and the focus of the organization. Where is the organization? Where does the organization uh, put their resources and efforts and attention as well? The strategy is the action plan that allow us to uh, achieve the vision. And typically it's based on three factors. Two of them are cited here. Another one I'll talk about in a little bit. The first one being the SWOT, basically strength, weaknesses, opportunities, strength uh, analysis of the organization. The second one is a choice of competitive advantage strategy, basically whether we want to be different from the other, whether we want to be the cheapest or have cost leadership, whether we want to be responsive to the market, to, to the demand. And typically the strategic process will start by developing 
the organization and mission and then those are div divided into functional area missions in terms of marketing operations and finance or accounting typically each of them would say how would you contribute as an operation for example to the function uh, to the organization mission now what factors would influence the uh, mission typically it starts through the values and philosophies of the organization and the environment would would uh, benefit would would fashion it the environment the customers the public image the profitability and growth etc so all those factors would influence the vision and will will actually get the organization positioning within this environment and those values that they have inherited from the founders of the organization or the history of the organization now the strategy is an action plan to achieve the vision typically each functional area might have its strategy that actually articulates that translates the organizational strategy into functional strategy strategies exploit opportunities and strength to neutralize threats and avoid weaknesses and those actually allow the organization to uh, develop the proper strategy this analysis is called SWOT analysis and it looks at the internal factors internal strength and weaknesses and those are expected to allow the organization to determine what are the key strengths that they can build on what are the key weaknesses that they need to protect uh, uh, from the threats and uh, typically that are attacks coming from competitors but not only that they could be as well changes in the environment that create opportunities and threats as well strategies are expected to allow the organization to develop uh, on the basis of their uh, a good reading of their strength weaknesses opportunities and threats an understanding of the environment and analysis of the environment that would add to that the environment the customers the industries the competitors the products that are substitutes this builds into the analysis of the environment helps the organization develop a proper mission uh, which is this stating the reason for the organization's existence and identifying the value it wishes to create this is then translated into strategy that would build a competitive advantage that are low price design volume flexibility quality quick delivery etc 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 many strategies that could be there unless we have a good understanding of the environment uh, mission is difficult to develop and therefore strategy after that is difficult as well to develop now the three key strategies three key competitive advantages that could be chosen by an organization are differentiation being better in terms of a product or at least different from the others second strategy being cost leader basically cheaper than the competition third one being more responsive now those are three strategies we can add another one having the best quality we can add uh, another uh, another strategy which is actually uh, a combination of all those competitors as well now if i want to be differentiated from my competitors i better have a different product or completely uh, stronger more robust for example product design if i want to be a cost leader i'd better have my cost actually the lowest possible so that i can i can uh, price my products cheaper than the competition if i have to be more responsive then I I'd better locate my, my products in a different way which actually lead us to the next thing now how do does operations management contribute to strategy now if we take the 10 operational decisions that we are talking about when we are for example talking about differentiation you'd expect actually innovative design you'll expect broad product line you they expect this particular after sales service or a particular experience which is actually the most lasting the most lasting difficult to compete against competitive strategy 
if we take cost leadership, then you need to have lower overheads, effective capacity usage, inventory management, proper inventory management. If we are talking of response, then we need to have flexible capacity, reliability, quickness, or speed in terms of execution. And some examples of differentiation, for example, uh, securities. Uh, security companies tend to actually create that particular experience that you would. Uh, um, that would provide you with the competition, competitive advantage and that would prevent you from going to other c companies. Cost leadership is low cost airlines, for example, are known to increase uh, the capacity, uh, the utilization, the aircraft utilization, and therefore allow the company to make the best out of their capacity and, and sell cheaper or uh, be uh, competitor, uh, competitive in terms of cost. Walmart is known as well to be to have a sophisticated distribution system that allows them for better inventory management and therefore they could allow themselves to be cheaper than other competitors. Responsiveness are those companies that will provide you with the experience of responsiveness. Your order will provide you with the product and those are competitive advantage. Now of course competitive advantage could be a, com uh, a result of a combination of uh, of those components and it doesn't have to be one strategy only on top of that we need to have an understanding typically of the product life cycle companies might adopt different strategies depending on the product life cycle phase that we are in and typically products go through a phase of introduction growth maturity and decline this applies as well to markets as well it applies to groups of products and when we are in introduction it's important that we are very careful on the product design on some of the capabilities that would allow us to fine-tune the production is it right that to be to be as well responsive to the market so that we are not overproducing and then after that getting stuck with those production when we move into the growth mode typically there is a surge in demand that we need the company and therefore we need to be as quick as efficient as, as possible because we need to catch up with the market on the third level which is the maturity level it's important that we are very careful with the cost with the cost uh, uh, component of our uh, of our uh, product or service so that we are, we make sure that we optimize actually the use of the capacity we optimize the process stability we try to have as long as possible product trends we try actually to work on product improvement and cost cutting etc because on the decline side we need to minimize the losses because and and be able actually to be responsive to the market decline potentially reduce the capacity and um, change the lines or realign the lines etc so i go back to this it could be a combination of strategies but at the same time it could be as well a sequence of strategies that we need to adopt depending on the product life cycle one of those strategies uh, could be for example uh, to uh, use a third party to help them produce but first before talking about that a strategy is as good as it is uh, implemented and it's important that we would we take into account the key success factors that would allow us to better execute the strategy to integrate operations management with the other activities so that they are streamlined and they are working all in the same direction and that we build and staff the right organization to execute the strategy as well. In general, uh, we might think of developing actually a complete different organization or adopt our strategy depending on the strategy that we that we are taking. One of the capabilities that we can use to uh, work with our current capacity is actually a strategy called outsourcing which is transferring the activities that traditionally have been 
uh, used internally to external suppliers. When we do this kind of strategy, we need to be very careful with some of those decisions. First of all, we don't outsource core competencies. Core competencies are meant to support our key mission and therefore need to be de developed in-house. Now, sometimes because of uh, acceleration of the environment due to increased technological expertise to actually having cost increase without out of control and rapid deployment and development of uh, telecommunications and connection, they might actually support us in terms of making those outsourcing decisions. Uh, outsourcing is a little bit different from subcontracting where actually we contract a third party to work on our and some of our activities. Now to do that we need to account for many factors and typically we need to be very careful in looking at all those capabilities that are produced out uh, uh, in the third party by a third party to support our production. Some of those risks could be actually uh, increased logistics and inventory costs, loss of control. We might actually uh, create potentially a future competitor. Many examples of outsourcing companies that actually turned into competitors at one point. There is a some, sometimes as well a negative impact on employees and the risk might, might actually uh, be uh, deferred so we might not see the risk immediately we might actually find the risk in getting too dependent on our supplier and therefore it's important that we evaluate outsourcing based on multiple factors we call this the factor rating method and it's important to be able to measure those factors to look at actually multiple factors for example we will uh, we'll look at criteria number one two three four five and in this method it's very similar to grades actually that we get uh, in a class we put an important an important weight uh, weight to each of those factors we grade those factors depending on uh, our research on a panel on a discussion on our science that we uh, on analysis that we do and then after that we s choose the factor that would give us actually the best score the best score being uh, either the highest score or the lowest score depending on how we grade actually those allow us this by the way uh, this uh, rating provider selection criteria or multi-factor uh, grading would allow us to actually weigh options and then select the best option after, after them. Those are just some tools of, uh, of strategy to develop the strategy. Remember again that strategy typically uh, is the initial part of uh, the organizational function and typically uh, those strategy would drive the organization quest towards uh, uh, success and profit profitability. Uh, this is the end of this chapter. We're looking forward to meeting you in the next